Do you have your ticket to a magical gay murder cruise? Hello fellow bookers, this is Gabby and today we're chatting about Voyage of the Damned by Francis White. New year, new reviews, and this was quite an exciting one because as you might have noticed from the slightly weird package, I've got an arc for this brand new release and I've read it now and I'm ready to chat to you about it. The book's coming out, I think today. So by the time you watch this video, the book is out and I have many, many thoughts. This book was sold to me in an interesting way. So let's talk about whether it lived up to that promise. So the reason I have an arc is that I attended Yolk earlier last year and that's a young adult literature convention and I've met the author. She has signed a book, so that's very exciting. And I won this in the raffle, so that was really, really fun. I uh, never heard of this book prior to that, but I saw these um, kind of thing perks that were coming, being given out with the book and it says Magical Gary Murder Cruise admit one and the offer was like if you like that headline because I was like oh my god that headline um she was like you'll like the book so let's start with a little bit of a synopsis as usual all the timestamps are down below but let's just get going so in Voyage of the Dam we follow we follow this fictional world called Concordia and you can see a little map here we love a map and the way the Concordia is set up that there are states or almost like kingdoms, each named after a different animal, and they divide the country and together they create this empire of Concordia. So we have dragon, tiger, spider, tortoise, elephant, crow, butterfly, grasshopper, bear, ermine, ox, and the fish. And each of the uh, provinces are named after animals because according to the creation legend of this world, there was once a flood and a goddess gave these animals a little bit of her power in order for them to be able to survive the flood. And each of the animals took a little bit of power and now, many years later, this power lives on in their descendants. So each of the provinces has um, a descendant who is part of the royal family and they are called the blessed because they have the blessing from the goddess. So the blessings are kind of taboo, no one really talks about what their specific blessing is, but we know who has them. And each year, all of the blessed meet uh, on different conventions. And once all the blessed are found for a generation, they have to go on this cruise to kind of the source of power where allegedly God, dog, the goddess came out and that kind of thing. So our main character is the blessed of the fish province. Um, his name's D. And he is a little bit different than others, mainly because he doesn't actually have a blessing. So the blessing passes on onto direct descendants, children of the previously blessed, which is why there's a law that the blessed are not meant to have bastards. But his dad didn't exactly listen, and the country is riddled with fish bastards, which means that D doesn't have the power, but has to pretend that he's one of the blessed. He's like, mm, I'm not ready to sign up for that for the rest of my life, so I'm gonna make everyone hate me. So fish is D's main goal in the whole cruise is to make everyone hate him so that they exile him and he doesn't have to pretend to be blessed. But uh, something really unexpected happens the first night of the cruise where the dragon, a blessed, uh, who the dragon is the emperor, um, and his daughter gets killed uh, in an apparent suicide, but we don't know what happened. So let's talk some details. Let's start off with writing. I really enjoyed writing in this novel. I just think it was really like a breath of fresh air. It felt really playful, really distinctive. It felt like there was such a clear narrative voice that you really, really got to know D because it is written in first person um, perspective. So you hearing from D his experiences, but it's all really witty. It's very lighthearted, but it can get really serious at times and just felt very dynamic. And I really loved the writing. I think it portrayed the main character so well and also gave the novel like a really unique vibe. I will say I have absolutely no clue what the rating of this book is. Like I said, I heard of this book, got an arc and met the author at the young adult convention. 
but the book on some websites is tagged as adults, on some way websites tagged as YA, so I'm not really sure. So you would think, okay, what was the content like? Tell us. Well, so the, the protagonist is 23 or 24 years old, um, and that made me feel, okay, so it's at least like a new adult kind of thing, it's a bit older. Also, the subject matter is really, really serious and it gets quite brutal and grim at times. So I feel like this book should be at least in the new adult category, at least like a little bit like younger feeling adult versus like YA, um, especially not younger YA. I'm not like book age range police here, so I don't really mind. Uh, but I will say that when I was like, is this YA? Because if I'm thinking of like a 14 year old reading this, it feels very mature. Whereas if um, I'm thinking of like an 18 year old, 17 year old reading this, then it feels okay. So it's like older a range of YA is what I'm trying to get at. But let's talk about uh, world building and atmosphere. So I absolutely love the atmosphere and I think I kind of mentioned this with the writing. It all felt really quirky, vibrant, colorful, but not like wanna be quirky, but actually quirky, actually different and lighthearted, especially in the beginning. Um, it definitely gets more serious as we go. It is a murder mystery, um, but it just, yeah, it just had this really rich feeling um, because the character voice was so distinct, because the world is so interesting, each of the provinces, people will have a specific hair color, which I thought was really fun. This is a very diverse cast, which I really enjoyed. Um, their customs were super diverse. So the world building just felt really, really, really strong. I feel like each of the province felt very unique, had really distinct sense of identity. They had different things that made them proud to be that province, different vices, um, they had different looks, they had different um, environments described, and we don't necessarily visit any of these because we're on the boat for the whole book, but you still really get a feel, feel for what they might be like through the people um, that are from there and then also through the descriptions and these experience of them. So I think that was done really well, and despite the fact that it, there is a danger that it could feel a little bit um, small because you're just in this one location. Um, the author really managed to convey that the sprawl, how sprawling the world is and how diverse and the intricacies of that. And I also think the aspect of them being on a boat was done really well. It felt isolated. It felt like you were, you know, among the waves on a very tight ship. Um, with each like room being quite different. It was still quite magical and different and quirky, but uh, at the same time, you did, I did feel like I was in a boat locked with these people that you don't know who you can trust. So I think that was a really well done and interesting element of the book. Where do I start with plot? So the book is sold as a murder mystery, right? And I feel like actually the murder mystery is the least interesting part of the whole thing. I feel like with the twist of who was the killer, I could predict that, I wasn't totally shocked. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's kind of what I roughly thought. Um, so that bit, if any of the bits, that bit was the least intriguing one for me, although it was fun to like learn more about the world as we learned about, uh, about the characters on the boat. I definitely feel like the murder mystery was just like a vehicle for that. It wasn't like, this is not at its core a murder mystery with clues and all that kind of stuff. There are definitely clues there and you can, pro and like I said, you can figure out who did it or you can have an inkling. And I think how um, it was presented at the end, it all made sense. Like I wasn't like mad at it, but that definitely wasn't the bit that interested me the most. I think something with this book is that you really, get a lot more than you might think just looking at the surface. When I went in this book, I thought, great, a murder mystery, gay cruise, awesome. Um, and it was a very different experience than what I actually got, which I think was quite a complex political examination of a country, of an empire. It would talked about corruption of power. It talked about um, the fallacies and why empires fall. And I think I wasn't expecting that and I wasn't maybe necessarily ready, but I enjoyed it so much. And I think like kudos to the book for saying so much and being so um, vocal in, in, in its message and doing it so well and having conversations rather than being too simplistic or too convoluted or just paying 
lip service because I never felt that way. It felt really fleshed out, really engaging, and it was done really well. And I wasn't expecting it, it was so it was a really big positive surprise, like how deep the book went. Then when it comes to characters, our main character D is plus sized. Um, and I think that's really great rep. I really love the. I think he, he's just such an amazing crafted character because uh, he's lighthearted, he's funny, um, quirky, but you can definitely see on under the surface how much pain there is and how much darkness and mess and how many demons he's facing. And I think that was a really realistic portrayal of someone who's struggling, but is fundamentally really kind and a good person and struck and copes with things and copes with negative emotions for humor um so not the most i think out of the box character but at the same time i feel like characters like him are often secondary characters he's like that fun comedic relief that has a lot more going on um but he's the main character and i really enjoyed that even in the moments when i thought hmm i'm a bit confused about his decision making here he's not very consistent i don't understand in the end it kind of came full circle was all explained and it made more like made complete sense in the end so even the bits where i was gonna be like i really don't I don't get this um like the, i felt like there was some insta love I feel like the insta love is definitely justified towards the end and it all makes sense towards the end. So that was brought full circle. And I think with D, you you are there to learn about struggling with the feelings of in a, in a, inadequacy, inadequacy. You're there to struggle with these uh, feelings of inadequacy. Ah, what the hell just happened? He feels inadequate and you're there to, you're there to really, um, come to terms with that and like the book says realize you're not nothing d was yeah he was a ray of sunshine but he was totally realistic he wasn't just like positive for positive positivity's sake overall all of the characters were so distinct so clear in their uh, personalities their motives even if they're hiding their motives uh and i liked how they all had a unique look and i really understood who what from each province it took a second but then once i got there you know i understood who, who was from where why they were they were they were why they were they the way they were why they were the way they were oh my god english is funny sometimes yeah and i think character work was just done really really well it's a small cast but everyone has a time to shine and i think their relationships with these specifically with each other were real realistic they were well thought out and aware they were well uh, explored so yeah i really really enjoyed that bit this is definitely this story it's about him learning to love himself and I think that's a very powerful and amazing um, message. So before I lose all ability to speak English, let's briefly touch on pun themes. Some of them I already mentioned, it's power, corruption of power, empires, how the powerful will prey on the weak. But like I said, at its core, it's about self-acceptance, self-love, standing up for yourself, standing up for what you believe. And it's kind of also about complacency being almost as bad as like the act itself like not standing up for others not not defending what you believe in being a bad thing and a sign of weakness and that we should stand up um there's also some su suicidal thoughts from a character and i think that bit was done really it was really sad but well explored and i think just like if this is something that triggers you just i want you to be aware but it was done really well and um I felt realistic and I loved the resolution of it. So in the end, did uh, Voyage of the Damned live up to the magical murder mystery cruise thing? I guess it did because there were all those things in it. But I think it's just so much more than that as well, which maybe you wouldn't expect. I think if you think of this book as more adult than YA or like a very much older YA uh, that will set up expectations a little bit better. I totally thought I was going into something a bit more maybe m middle grade or like older middle, very younger YA with like being quirky and fun and weird and just wacky and we're here for a good time. And that's true to an extent. It was weird, wacky, fun, all of those things, but it also had loads to say and a lot a lot of powerful messages. So I know we literally just sat through a whole review and I talk in details, but I know some people just love the rating and I am going through this new uh, resolution this year to use Copile um, to better understand my ratings. So if you're interested in Copile, I have given it nine for characters, 10 for atmosphere, not eight for writing, 
8 for plot, 9 for intrigue, 9 for logic, 10 for enjoyment, getting a 9 in the end, and that means it was a 5-star read. And I would agree, that was my gut feeling too. So yeah, 5-star read from me. I would totally recommend this. I think it's got amazing, amazing representation. I didn't even mention that there was a character who went by they, them pronouns, the main character is bisexual, plus size, there's a character using a wheelchair, making this like really diverse, really vibrant and amazing book. And the offer was lovely. I got a signature, I'm so happy. And I actually loved reading this. This is so floppy. Why can't all books be like this? I don't even mind that this is like, like paper, not like proper co cover. This is like so floppy, I love it. Editing Gabby here, so. I just wanted to pop in because I feel like my review is like really positive and I did feel really, really, really good about the book and I really liked it. But there was like some stuff that bothered me about the ending and the reason I didn't talk about it was because it's spoilers. So I think we're just gonna do like a super quick spoiler section where we can get into that. So that is, this is pretty much the end of the video, but if you wanted to stick around for my spoiler thoughts, um, please do. And otherwise, I'll see you in my next one. If you are here and you don't, haven't read it, but you don't care about spoilers, let me tell you what happens. So essentially D, the main character, his one first love called Ravi, he thinks he died in like first couple chapters. Then he kind of falls in love with this new guy called, new guy called Wyatt. And Wyatt was like his enemy before, but now all of a sudden they're like, really close and they fall in love um and it's like four days so I was like okay maybe it's more than four days but like more than like a week um <laughs> and I was like that was quick turns out it was quick because Wyatt is actually Ravi the first love and his superpower is like shape-shifting so Ravi shape-shifted it pretended to be Wyatt and he fell in love with him that's like already slightly icky because it's like big unbalance of information but I almost like can forgive that uh, but the fact is that Ravi originally was part of the plan so the plan is that these like upper level uh, provinces like more powerful people basically want to kill everyone um, above under a certain like thing because there's this border they want to raise up and then you the people on the other side of the board get like overwhelmed and killed and like Ravi was part of that and he was not like an active part of the murder plot but like a willing participant and then also he was supposed to kill someone to prove his loyalty and D is part of the lower provinces right so his province would have been killed so like your 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 love was okay with genocide number one because hundreds of people would have died and they're all like the same province that they consider beneath them so number one okay with genocide number two okay with genocide of you and your people because they would have died along with everyone else and i'm like everyone else like in his country and i'm like okay that's pretty fucked up and then they end up together at the end and Ravi does like say like he was okay with this clearly like he's not the person to rule whatever whatever he does say he changed and D made him see the error of his ways but I'm like this is so messed up on so many levels because not only were you okay with genocide you were okay with me dying and my people dying and we've dated, like, we were in love. It's not like he didn't know D. He already, I would have been like, you're okay with bajillion people dying? Like, even if you don't know, that was pretty fucked up. And then, like, you know them? You know me? You came to visit? Like, suspicious. So, I don't like that. If I'm being honest, I think I would have preferred the historic can end how it ends. But I would have preferred Ravi not to be a part. Like, them say, hey, listen, like, we were really important to each other at a point in time. And clearly, like, we can still, we still fell in love again, or D did. But the whole genocide thing is a bit of a turn off. So we're going to have to at least take a break. Like, I feel like that would have been better. Um, 
Instead, he goes with the genocider. So, you know what? I still think this book is really good and I really had a great time. I wish the ending was different because I don't get it. But let me know, have, what did you think of the ending or what did you think from what I just presented to you as the ending? Like, do you, what do you think? Is this worth ducking like a half a star? Like, I really don't know. Hmm. Maybe it doesn't deserve me taking a bite out of logic because to me that logic is like pretty Okay, those are my quick spoiler thoughts. I just I just didn't want for you to read this book and think that I agree with everything that was portrayed because I don't. Okay. I would totally recommend Voyage of the Damned and I hope you read it. I hope you let me know what you thought about it. If you did read it, I would love to hear from you. Let me know, does a murder mystery gay cruise appeal to you as a selling point? Because it definitely did to me and I'm not disappointed. So yeah, extremely pleasant surprise because I've never heard of this book prior to this. So I hope I introduced you something new. And if you enjoyed this video, if you could give it a like, comment and subscribe, I really, really, really appreciate it. It really helps me out. But that's it from me and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.